IMF's World Economic Outlook says impact of COVID-19 is less severe than expected on the global economy. But the pandemic would leave deep and enduring scars caused by job losses and weaker investment and even children being deprived of education. India will also suffer a deeper economic slump with its GDP contracting by a whopping 10.3% this year. To know what is the broader picture of the biggest economic crisis the world is facing now, we are joined by Gita Gopinath, Chief Economist, IMF, from Washington, D.C. Welcome to Beyond, Dr. Gopinath. Well, thanks for joining us. My first question to you is, IMF estimates global COVID would lost would cost at least $28 trillion in lost output to us, to the global economy. How hard is the recovery and how long it is expected to take to recover? So we're describing the recovery as one that's long, uneven, and still remains highly uncertain. So for the first time, we put out projections for the medium term, which is into 2025. And that's where you see that this COVID uh, pandemic is weighing on economic activity well into the medium term, uh, which is where you get the 28 trillion number from, which is cumulatively the loss in output relative to the pre-pandemic projected path is considerable. So the reason we're thinking of the recovery as long is because for most countries, you don't return back to 2019 levels of GDP even uh, next year. So it's going to take you into 2022 and in some cases into 2023. So it's going to be a very long ascent. Though you're going to see initially a big you know, a quick jump up, the rest of the travel is going to take uh, uh, quite some time. And a big issue is the fact that we're still living with the virus. We don't have a solution for the pandemic. And as long as this uncertainty exists, investment is weak, and people are not engaging in contact-intensive uh, sectors. And with India, what are the immediate steps required to bring back Indian economy on the path to growth? Do you think the steps taken so far by Indian government are sufficient? You know, the government has taken considerable steps, both in fiscal policy and monetary policy. On the fiscal side, uh, they've deployed 7% uh, of uh, GDP in fiscal measures, and that's really significant. Uh, the difference, of course, is that they focused more on liquidity measures, which take the form of loan guarantees and credit guarantees. And only about 2% has taken the form of a direct spending, direct income support, either to you know, poorer households, uh, SMEs, uh, unemployment benefits, and so on. So that measure has only been 2%. So that's one area where we see scope for doing more. We think there can be more stimulus provided in the form of more direct spending support, because that's what we're seeing is very effective around the world. So that's one way of bringing back, uh, making having a faster recovery. The second uh, is, of course, to continue focusing on health spending, because as long as this pandemic continues to spread, that's an area that requires a lot of attention. But, you know, it has to continue to invest into the, uh, into the uh, future also. Also, support for SMEs are required. We see a greater scope for providing support to SMEs than what's being done at this point. The government might also want to revisit, for instance, the, the programs that they have in place in terms of, uh, you know, the loan, loan support schemes and all of that, uh, how well those are working, uh, and to improve, uh, you know, effectiveness, which is something that all governments are doing around the world. And the third is a public investment spending uh, drive, and that's something that actually the government has committed to on a very large scale, so that's very welcome. That's another way of bringing back growth and uh, also bringing back jobs. And you also said India's recovery in FI22 could be a sharp 8%. But according to you, what steps are required more and what other steps are required for this? So this is in line with what I just said to your uh, previous uh, question, which is the fact that compared to other countries, uh, the support has been more in the form of what we call below-the-line support, which is more indirect loan support as opposed to direct spending. And so that's why we think a little more can be done. Uh, we think there's, there's uh, space for monetary easing once this, uh, you know, the spike in food inflation goes away. Then we think there can be more cuts over there. So these are, these are the measures we were referring to. 
And stock markets across the globe have not performed as bad as uh, expected or as bad as the economy. So what is the reason? Is stimulus money going to stock markets across the world? Well, no, what we're seeing in stock markets is, uh, is, in the, is a reflection of the considerable fiscal support and also of this considerable central bank support. So one of the reasons why we've seen these rebounding uh, financial markets, strong rebound financial markets, is because interest rates are low. They're projected to stay low for a long time. And you've seen a big compression in uh, risk premia. Uh, also, but uh, if you also look at the composition of the stock market and who's doing well, I mean, you can see that there are some the sectors that are doing well in this crisis, like tech and pharma. That's where you actually see the biggest increase in stock prices, while the sectors that are being hit hard, you know, you, you, they're well below 2019 uh, levels. And that's true even in India, where it's tech and pharma and reliance, where you see most of all of the uh, increase in the stock price since the start of this year. So that's another fact. And third, there is certainly uh, investor optimism that there will be a, a fast, faster recovery from this crisis, uh, that there will be health solutions that will come sooner. Uh, and you can, there is a stretch, you see certainly stretched evaluations in, in certain markets. So one has to keep an eye to make sure that this, this doesn't end up, you know, bringing in lots of financial fragility. And India has undertaken few reforms recently, including the farm laws. Do you think they're a step in the right direction? Yes, we, we do believe there are significant steps uh, in the right direction. Uh, you know, when it comes to the farm bills, uh, being ha able, to, able to have a more integrated uh, agri market to sell your produce, farmers to be able to contract much more directly with sellers. Uh, you know, there's scope for being, for farmers to get a bigger share of the value of their final uh, of their produce uh, in the on the market. Uh, you know, all, all of this is is very promising. Of course, the implementation, the details will matter. Uh, similarly, on the labor market side, you know, greater flexibility is brought in in terms of firms uh, hiring decisions, but also uh, providing a social safety net to workers, formalizing the labor market. So these are these are very welcome uh, supply side measures. But again, the, the, the implementation is going to be very important. Second coronavirus wave is deepening economic pain for Europe with more lockdowns coming. How will it further impact the growth? So what we uh, assuming now, Sumit, is that that indeed that there will, will be resurgence of viruses. That's what in our baseline is that you will have resurgence of the virus. But the assumption is that it will have the kind of impact that we saw in the summer when we saw a big resurgence in viruses, for instance, in the U.S., virus cases in the U.S., right? So it will be more like the summer and not like we saw in the spring, which is March and April, where, there were that, where the effect was far more severe. As long as that's the case, then that will be in line with our forecast. But if that's not the case, uh, you know, then that will be a downside risk. And I do think we've learned to live better with the virus. I mean, we've personally learned to live better with it. The way the medical profession handles people who fall sick with COVID-19 has improved quite significantly. And we, you know, as long as we all practice wearing masks and social distancing, uh, that uh, will help, uh, you know, reduce the economic impact and also the, uh, you know, consequences in terms of personal health. And economists have argued that direct fiscal stimulus in terms of tax cuts or cash transfer is need of the R in India. Do you also hold this view? What we are seeing is indeed that these measures that put income directly in the hands of uh, workers and firms uh, seem to have the most positive effect in terms of recovery. So in line with what I said in response to your first question, we do see that while India has done considerable amounts of support, that they could do uh, additional stimulus, which would be in the form of more direct uh, spending, cash transfers, including to the urban poor, to migrant workers. Uh, those would help. Co-presented by Skoda. Simply clever.